All right, this video is on um, a Europower PMH660M. Uh, problem I have is, while the, the unit does work, um, for the most part, the power amplifier section appears to be blown. And so what I want to do is explain what I did to check this thing out. Uh, basically, pulled apart the internals, opened up the... Uh, the back panel exposed this this is the amplifier module here with the big heat sink on it the big black heat sink um, not to be confused with this heat sink down here uh, I want to actually open this guy up because it has this metal cover over the top probably um, somewhat as an EMI shield um, but what you want to do is you want to look at where these transistors are mounted so you can see there's three TO220 style transistors for the left channel and then there's another three here with two of which have been removed for the right channel um, what I did is I ohmed between the drain and source of the the two outer parts here and uh, they were shorted so basically it was taking down the power supply rails um, I believe it did affect this other one here, although I can't remember when I tested it earlier. But once I removed the um, the bad ones, which were shorted, uh, the the good ones worked fine. So the other channel came up and was it was running no problem. Um, so the two FETs that had a problem were um, this complementary pair. It's an IRF six forty and an IRF9640 um, both of these must have had a catastrophic event because they're both uh, internally shorted basically the the drain sourcing gator pretty much shorted together um, I ordered a set of these on Mauser electronics uh, they're only a buck or two a piece and so I just ordered like three each just to make the shipping dollar cost average enough to make it worthwhile um, but I'm going to give it a whirl and replace these and, and see if the amp comes back up on the channel that was bad. Alright, so we got a new pair of FETs for this, um, this amplifier section, the IRF, IRF640 and the IRF9640. Uh, these are uh, N-channel, P-channel uh, complementary pairs. So we're going to give uh, it a shot and reinstall these with heat sink compound. you got to make sure you have that on there. Um, to dissipate the heat that comes off of these guys otherwise you're gonna have a failure again uh, due to a thermal and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it out and see if it works just one more thing that came to mind uh, once you put this heat sink compound on make sure that you have the there's a um, mica insulator uh, between the back of the transistor and the heat sink itself and this is to, to uh, electrically isolate the connection between the the metal tab on the on the back of this thing um, to the heatsink itself, because the the metal tab is part of the transistor electrically, so they want to make sure that they're not shorted to the the heatsink. Otherwise, that's going to cause you lots of problems. So just make sure you install that that insulator that's there. It's really thin and kind of hard to see, uh, but make sure you have it slipped in between the back of this transistor and the heatsink itself. So I found my dead output B channel um, looked to be due to these two output transistors, T3 and T4. Uh, both FETs were shorted completely. So I removed them and powered the unit back on and lo and behold output A started working. So I replaced T3 and T4 with new transistors and turned on the unit and neither output worked. So I started scratching my head, well what could cause that? What it looks like is there's a enable signal on IC1, pins 1 and pins 1 and 8 on IC1 that disable the FET drivers and that disable occurs when there's 
an overcurrent shutdown from either output A or output B. So since output A worked and output B didn't, I suspect that the shutdown for number two, which is output B, is the cause. So I started to investigate that. Well, it looks like shutdown two here is asserted when too much current is sensed by R3 or R8. In this case, um, I suspected those one or both resistors uh, were compromised. So when I buzzed them out, they were open. So that naturally would cause the shutdown to trip inadvertently, even with good transistors. So I'm going to replace those. Let me show you what those look like. If you look at the board here, you see R8 down there. Uh, that was a large uh, 0 0.1 resistor. And it's neighbor is right sorry is right here r3 that resistor also was open so i'm going to put some new ones in and we'll go from there just a quick update on the resistors that i replaced uh you can see these are the resistors that were blown open um r3 and r8 um, i replaced them with some parts i bought on amazon uh, these were uh, available for six dollars for a 30 pack um, Pretty much the same size. So I kind of assumed these are two waters um, I was thinking about actually using four of these to get the effective resistance, but uh, in increasing the power capability, but I actually think it's better not to do that because you want you rather have these blow open um, than than burn traces on your board, so uh, I'm going to see how these work out, um, but I just want to let you know these are the ones I bought. So I just ran a series of tests on this unit, and everything's working normal now. Both channels work great.